Hey guys, welcome back to the Tears of the Kingdom Chronicles, brought to you by Potendo, a Nintendo podcast. I'm your co-host, Mick, and I'm joined by... Tyson. Oh boy, that was a week. That was a week. Were you guys thrilled listening about the Imprisoning War? You're like, man, those old guys, they sure like Link to the Past. We do. We, You know what? If we can incorporate it into every show, much like James Bond, we will. Whee! I, but this one... I, I guess the term is old heads. We're old, old heads. Yeah, there you go, old heads. So now we are talking about the retro game, uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, we have a little more runway today, so we don't have to keep it as short and condensed. Uh, it was developed by Nintendo. So far, at least when I wrote the notes, there was about 15 million copies sold. That might be a couple weeks old, to be honest with you, so probably more, which is great. Uh, release date was May 12, 2023. How long to beat has this game at at least 50 hours? Currently, it was like 53 hours. That's probably if you do stuff. How, how often? You, you Most of the time you play this game, you just don't do anything. Which is great. Controls of this fun, fun game. So it's very similar to Breath of the Wild. You can run, jump, and climb in a fully open world. You can collect materials to cook. Uh, you can like upgrade armor, swords. It's fine. Yeah, there's some abilities too. Yeah, then we have uh, uh, some new abilities that we'll get into a little bit as we kind of go through like just playing the game. Uh, they have we have self weapons that have durability and are prone to breaking. It's still such a stupid mechanic. I don't know why they stayed with that one. Uh, and you can find horses uh, to travel quicker. You can use travel points to warp around the giant map. There you go. So giddy up, giddy up. Yeah, yeah, very very similar to Breath of the Wild. Um, yeah. but it feels like kind of just a a straight up sequel or continuation Mm -hmm. of breath of the wild and i'm okay with that i mean few of the abilities are gone because by the end of breath of the wild you can really zip around and do Mm -hmm. whatever the freak you want it's uh it's really nice whereas this one it's a little um i I don't know all the extra abilities or what else you get so Uh i look forward to kind of discovering it and because i know there's some gaps in my my abilities wheel so Looking there you forward go. to filling that out. Cool. Yeah, so for today, uh, we talked kind of about the intro, right? Uh, some of the lore, uh, at least the inspirations, where we th- think it fits in the timeline. It doesn't fit in the timeline. I think that's kind of the the, the point. Anyways, uh, so we talked about that last week. This week, we're kind of looking at the other mechanics, right? So that's why I read to you the vital stats. Uh, we'll go through the first area anyways. Uh, into Hyrule, we can talk about some of our uh, things we've noticed, things we're finding, things that are shocked some things that have been uh spoiled so big spoiler warning just like last week we're talking about this game if you haven't played it yet don't listen to us otherwise let's go oh also i watched the mario movie it was terrible oh okay yeah it wasn't good we can talk about it afterwards we don't talk about it on the zelda podcast but like oh boy Ugh. yeah yeah you know what i i don't care the box office is doing great and that's doing good for my stock so oh, I'm happy. Excellent, good, super. So uh, as we as we were saying last time, uh, Zelda, uh, an ancient evil, looks like kind of an old mummy version of uh, Ganon awoke. Kind of neat. Uh, Zelda disappeared. Our arm got d- torn off, and we wake up. Uh, so we're in the Great Sky Island. So we awaken with a new blackened arm. We meet Rauru, who's like a Birdman, and he's like, "I oh, that was my arm." That was holding this evil. And now it's your arm. But he, I'm a ghost. Ooh. And I'm like, oh, Rauru. Like the owl from, or the, the, the Sage of Light, or the owl from uh, Ocarina of Time. Interesting. Yep, interesting. Yep. Um, Kind of neat take. But, uh, I mean, instead of that owl flying around, you got this... Um, Ghostly apparition that bothers you? Dra- giraffe man? Uh, yeah, he's kind of a giraffe man. Got, it, got the, that neck and the ears thing going on. Yeah, he definitely has a like a furry thing going on, and I'm like, hmm. And Link also, it's, like he's he's definitely naked, and he's got kind of more of a shaggy thing. I feel like there's yeah. definitely an art style on like some 4chan site somewhere <laughs> that they were like it definitely inspired by. Like, what do the kids think are sex? Like, man, they love watching skinny twinks have sex with giraffes. So let's let's just keep <laughs> <laughs> like that. That's kind of what I was like. Uh, this these characters like they definitely are going more sexy. Uh, um, yeah. Also, I'm a quick nit- nitpick. What's up with the contrast? What do you mean? Like, er- or the saturation of the colors? Mm. Everything's super washed out. It was like, this is 
an interesting take. Instead of being like, let's have a colorful world. It's like, no, no, just wash out all those colors. So it's got that nice, (laughs) nice uh, blown out look to everything. So that that one of the big criticisms I've heard thus far about this game is uh, like, you know, you hear the, the, the frame rate and the 1080p and it's not 1080p. It's only 720 or something, right? Like, it is the limitation of the Switch hardware, right? Really, you're playing these games on essentially a glorified tablet. And in uh, my case, my physical copy is a little tiny memory card, right? This little yeah. tiny disc. It's, uh, it's it's insignificant compared to the power that the PS5s or the new Xboxes with their There's discs. cell phones that are technically more powerful nowadays than um, this, the Switch. So. Uh, how big is this game? Have you ever looked at the file size? Uh, like 22 or 16 megabytes, something around there. I remember it was reasonable because I was cleaning out my... Uh, I didn't run out of storage when I installed it, and I was like, that's weird. I kind of figured that I would run out of storage at some point because I knew I was getting tight. And then it was just like, no, it's fine. 18 so, gigabytes, apparently in total. Oh, could have split the difference. 18 gigabytes, guys. Yeah. That's like... Yeah. my. I have more podcasts on my phone currently then this game is like you know what i mean like then this this the size like that's absolutely ridiculous your phone could hold at least three versions of this game right so the fact why yeah. is it washed out a little bit why does it look grainy why is it cartoony why is the draw distance a little bit limited cuz nintendo knew that it was a portable big open world game and they compressed things so there you go why what what's it the the visuals it's because they wanted There's to the hardware yep and they wanted to keep it small, right? They didn't want to be like, you know, you need but to buy a... At the same time, I think, like, they do such an incredible job, right? Like, man, being able to just strictly um, go from, like, launching a tower, go flying, and then drop into a... a floating an abyssal, island. Or... or, or go, like, yeah, drop into a floating island, uh-huh. and then drop onto the mainland, and then drop into, like, the abyss. Like, it's all, it's all just seamless. There are it's, no low points. There are no... Uh, they must be doing some cool stuff for the hardware in the back end. Uh, and I think yeah. that's one of the most, it's not the most beautiful game, right? It's not the, the horizon, uh, whatever the zero dawn games technically are probably bigger. Look better. Cool. As they absolutely should. Yeah. Like, and, and that's why like, you're running on a thousand dollar piece of hardware in the PS five to, yeah, and you're running like the, you, you technically are running some top of the line like graphics engines mm-hmm. and all sorts of like physics engines and all this stuff. And to ha- have such limited old hardware that Nintendo had to work with and to pr- pump out this game that so far is just like, I, I love it. I, and I, I think... I don't understand the difference, to be honest with you. So I've heard people talk about this, and they talk about the PS5, and they say there's actually different models you can, or different ways you can stream and like set up your system so you can have performance. Uh, so it's going to have higher frame rates and less dropouts, or visuals, and it'll have more stunning visuals and realistic, but you're not going to have the same performance. So the PS5, the top-of-the-line machine, is still struggling to do both well, right? It's still struggling to chug along. And again, yeah, this essentially what equates to like your phone (laughs) is running this amazing game. It's going to have some limitations visually. I'm not offended by visuals whatsoever. It's gameplay. It is story. It is narrative. It is uh, fun. Those are probably more important to me than how a game looks. So just right off the start, I think it looks fine. Uh, It looks just as good as breath of the wild. Right. So it's still maybe a gen behind, but Fuck it, and guys, come honestly, on. Honestly, like, uh, every time I every time I boot up this game, there's like a new update, mm. and on, honestly, like the visuals are what they are. It's like I'm I'm I think it's totally fine. I'm it looks exactly like Breath of the Wild, and yeah. I had no qualms with with that game. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things where you I, want I'm the so, new shiny game to look new and shiny. Yeah, well, yeah. It's just like I don't know, comparing it to other games that are like super saturated, and to be honest. I mean, if I cared that much, I could blow out the saturation on my TV, but mm-hmm. I don't usually do that. I like a more like neutral look to it, but that's just me nitpicking. Okay. Um, but it was just like this, uh, man, just the physics engine alone in this game is kind of incredible. And it's making me play the game. It makes it feel like it's your own unique experience. Like, I'm sure I'm doing things in a much more janky, busted way than everybody else is like doing it. 
But at the same time, it's like, who cares? That's the fun of the game is just exploring oh. and using the, the abilities and the controls to just have fun. Very much so. And it is a completely... that's So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the Great Sky Island, which is kind of our intro area, our Great Plateau uh, from Breath of the Wild. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk... Then we're just going to talk about some experiences that we've had, right? Fun things that we've done. Because, yeah, I imagine if you compare it our gameplays like we went off in completely different routes we've had different experiences we've seen things the other day i was trying to get oh let's not get into that yet i'll talk about that afterwards so uh back to great sky island and the openness of this game uh so we find some after we've talked to raru our sexy bird giraffe guy uh we find some robots that can help us explain the basic mechanics uh, and you can head to the first shrine. Here you'll find the Ultra Hand ability. And with this, you can manipulate objects and you can connect them together to build things. Do you like Minecraft? Do you like Fortnite? Oh boy! There's going to be lots of that. And they're going to get very complicated. And you're not an engineer. And all your machines are going to suck. So, but yep. I can make a damn good ramp. You know what? And sometimes just being able to just drop something where you need to drop it it's just like ah, that's good enough yeah pretty much so <laughs> lots of putting logs together boards together planks together uh making little bridges setting them over things uh there's a the rotation system is a little bit confusing it took me a while to be like okay i want this vertical and it's horizontal how do i do that and you have to kind of like spin it and flip it it's like a Rub like a, almost like it feels like a rubik's cube when you first started and i was like i'll never understand this and now i can like be like oh i want this and there and like put a bit of an angle and like i'm gonna make a jump for my horse and like this could be awesome <laughs> yeah and i think for for me the thing that kind of clicked was just like i just if i just line up everything straight on mm. it's so much easier to manipulate because yep. i i default up down and then the left and the right and the diagonals are kind of like eh, that's not really what i wanted it's like but as soon as i was just like no just rotate it straight yeah. to yourself or whatever and then just go from there it's yeah, yeah. like kind of get a sense better for it i don't know but it's like ever since i started doing that it's like oh i don't have problems with this anymore i'm no longer spending 20 seconds to find the right oh, no. and you can angle. make some pretty cool contraptions right depending on much wood and supplies are in the area or trees right oh. like i made giant ass bridges and planks and like I almost cheesed some of the areas. In fact, I almost cheesed the next obstacle. Uh, I'm pretty sure I cheesed the next obstacle. Yeah. It's like... So we have the Ultra Hand ability. We're now uh, tasked with exp uh, exploring the Great uh, Sky Island. Uh, we can... we Most likely cliffs is what we're doing. So we're taking logs. We're placing them. We're putting two logs together, building little bridges. Uh, and then at one point, we get to this little river that basically flows off into nowhere and you die. Uh, and they want you to take three logs, put them together and put a fan on it and make a boat. Sounds easy, right? Or yep. you can just take everything and make one giant log and bridge and lay it across the river, make a run for it and then swim the rest of the way. That also works. That also works. Um, I came across that built a, built a thing. Didn't realize that you had to smack the, uh, the fans to yeah. turn them on. Okay. was like, no, oh, I'm clearly missing an ability. I'll go somewhere else. So I went to the other shrine, and then I did that one, and then I doubled back to this one. But I came up the back way, and I just I went the complete opposite side. And I guess you could just do that. And if you just build a few, you know, bridges or uh, ladders with with logs laying around, all of a sudden you're there. <laughs> cool. That's fun. Yeah, I, I yeah, myself too. I think I was able to build a boat but then like my boats ran out of juice and then i fell in the water and drowned so then all my boats and all all the items were like in the middle of the river uh, so i think i had to build a bridge to then get to my boat to then try and reset them and i basically got close and just swam for it and i was like oh my gosh that was horrific i was like this game is gonna be a nightmare and at this point i'm like seeing early videos online and this guy made this like there's a star destroyer dry these guys driving around on the ground and i'm like i am outclassed it's one of those games where I'm just a little bit too old. I haven't, I don't have the, the you know, the five years of nothing but Minecraft and Fortnite under my belt. Uh, I'm, I'm, there's a different style, a level of gamer out there. I, I, I think I've got there um, now. You know, I, I, I think that that's yeah. just creativity. Yeah, like that's so that guy got the idea because he saw somebody making a basic other thing, and yeah, then fair. honestly, it's like. Now, now that you see that, it's like you could probably analyze it and be like, I could replicate something like that. It won't be as nice looking. Mm -hmm. It'll probably be jank, but you know it'll work. Like I saw somebody, um, you could just flip some fans 
and then all of a sudden you have a little hoverboard. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I was like, I was like, oh, that's brilliant. So I just like make a hoverboard every once in a while. If you give them like those little steering things, yeah, and yeah. it's like you're set. Cool, you're set. That's fine. Um, but yeah. it's also the same time. It's like then I went down. I fell down into the. This is later on. Maybe we'll get to the, I'll get to the, the level notes and then I'll tell you about some of the fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, we, we, we got so. anything that's not on the Great Sky Island doesn't we can't talk about it until we get to Hyrule. <laughs> okay, as tempting exactly. as it is. All right, so uh, shrine three. Uh, so sorry, the second uh, we traverse the river. The second shrine gives us the ability to fuse weapons and items. So if you found a piece of stone on the ground, you can put it on your sword, and now you can break through stones and become a digger. It's good stuff. Yep, yep, or just a big old piece of log, and then you stick a rock to it, and all of a sudden you got a giant hammer or a giant axe, and you're like, this is acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are some other ones that I really enjoyed? Uh, apparently rubies, if you find a ruby, they're worth money, or you can attach it to a shield, and it helps prevent cold, uh, succumbing to the cold in this game. So if you have a shield oh, with a ruby on your back, it acts as one degree of cold resistance. So you have that plus, like, a shirt from the the, the, the the ice world or something like that, you can go anywhere in the game and you don't freeze to death, so it's kind of neat. Very cool, yeah. very cool. I mean, I may just steal that idea because uh, uh, I, 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 got, I, got I got the pants. I was running around for the longest time without a shirt on. Yeah, yeah. Like, Oh, I was the longest like longest time without a shirt on. And I was like, "Where the heck's the shirt?" <laughs> well, you find the shirt in one of the levels, but like, it's just like it's a shoulder pad, so you're still very okay. sexy. Like, I think literally, oh, it's okay. just like the first thing you get is like a shoulder pad, and that's like the little armor with like the little like loin cloth. And I was like, "Yeah, they're going for something. They're really uh, thinking they found a target audience with this game, and like the art style is really leaning towards." a certain part of the internet all i'll say uh shrine three though uh you can now explore a cave build some motorized train carts uh, and need to keep warm so you can get to the third shrine here you'll learn the ability ascend it'll allow you to jump slash travel vertically through the ground uh, and things above you uh, it fits well with the theme of the game verticality yeah um and i love this this is such a time saver when it comes to cl climbing stuff now I forget about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I forgot about it for a while until I needed to find the fourth shrine, and then I was oh, like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, this is this this is actually not that. This is actually kind of useful. I should use this more." Yeah, I missed that. So as Tyson alluded, so there we go. So what we were trying to do is this whole time was we were trying to get it to the Temple of Time, but we needed to get these these abilities so our hand would give us access. Now we're in, we're like, great, awesome. I've got my three little shrines built. The last one was four, but like, don't think about that. So you enter the Temple of Time, you get the recall ability, which allows things to go backwards. And you find out you need one more shrine. God damn it, I knew it the whole time. Why did I trust this stupid draft man? <sighs> so then you explore the entire island five times. You can't find it, and you go to the internet. And you find out that at the very beginning area, you use Ascend and Recall to find the fourth and final shrine. Son of a gun. You get a new heart container, it opens the door of time, and we're done. We're done, Great Sky Island. Did you suffer as much as I did, or was the Great Sky Island easy for you? Because you're such a better um, video game player than I am. Let's brag about it right now. Make me feel bad on the internet. <laughs> no, I I was stumped for a bit, okay. and, then, and then I was like, Wait a minute! I'm so stupid. There's the, uh, literally an ability because I'm mm. trying to like climb, mm. I, and because I, I saw like th that I needed to. I saw that there was that like little like opening, and like haven't been there. It's probably the, probably where I need to go. Because um, I was even like exploring like underground caves where mm -hmm. it was like dark all of a sudden, and you're just like, well, I guess you just light a torch or something, or you find like those are. Uh, exploding or those uh little light mushrooms yeah yeah and you put um, on your arrow and you like make little lamps yeah okay. exactly um so i was like i was doing all that and then i finally went back to like the beginning because i was like i know that there's like a treasure chest somewhere in the beginning because i didn't find everything because i still don't have a shirt mm. um and then i uh used that and then did the reverse and then worked my way through it but i was like it was one of those moments where i was like wow i completely was not thinking about this and no. it didn't hit me that i'm gonna need to use this ability more that's this funny. is a very key ability yeah so i got i got i got recall left the temple of time and and i was told hey you can now travel back to other shrines and like check out these blue dots so i went back to every area and i was exploring around and i'm like there's gotta be something and i went back to the first area like three times and i was like clearly 
once I leave this cave, I have an ability that like helps me get somewhere. So I kept running and jumping and flying. And like, I was like one of these little islands that like right at the beginning that you kind of miss when you're falling through the sky, that must be the answer. And again, finally I resorted to the internet and I was like, Oh, I see. I see that thing. I, I ran past multiple yeah. times, but yeah. now that we have our four hearts, we have enough strength to open the door of time. Uh, we can jump on these weird little like Eagle things, put them in these tracks which then slowly uh, it, it propel us into the air. We kind of glide for a little bit uh, and then fall to Hyrule below. And you have to land in lakes if you don't have a paraglider. So as you're falling, if you see ground, you're probably dead. But you do have to find a lake or a river or something to soften the impact. You do that, you're in Hyrule Field. You have some equipment. Go nuts. The only disclaimer I would say, before you do too much exploring, like I did and found like three of the towers that wouldn't open. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? Like, what's wrong with this game? Why won't anything happen? You actually have to do some story prompts. You have to go visit some lady in a village, and then you have to go up to the castle and talk to a guard, and then you see Zelda, and then you talk to the village, and then she says, hey, you can open towers now. Also, here's the hang glider. And I'm like, yeah, that's, sh- sh- should have done that. That's too bad. That's fair. I was lazy, and I was like, that's the closest tower. I'm running there. And it just so happened to be that mm. first place. And everybody's like, you should talk to Impa. Okay. And I was like, okay. No, I think it, I, I, I say I wrote Impa, but I think it's a guard. You want to talk to a guard at the castle or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 I was just playing um, Xenoblade Chronicles. So I was accustomed to, you have to talk to everybody in that game. Uh, you have to talk to named NPCs. Yeah. So if it doesn't have a name, you can kind of skip them. But still, it's like, whatever. I'm not going to skip anybody. I'm just going to talk to everybody since that's a mechanic, apparently. Sure. So yeah, like that trained me to talk to the first guy I saw. Okay, nice. Yeah, that's fair. And that, that's all. And like, yeah, once you kind of get through those things, you get the hang glider, the world is then open. Uh, all of the towers are available to you. You can kind of go and explore, uh, fill in parts of the map. Do really anything you want. So here we go. Now we got to that part. We're exploring. Uh, we're not going to do any of the temple stuff or any more story points beyond this podcast. So if you're still playing along and you're kind of just in the open world exploring, feel free to keep listening. We're not wrecking anything. I know nothing. I know nothing besides that. I think I literally found Impa somewhere and she said, hey, you should check out this hyra- this dragon gl- glyph or something. And I was like, Psh, I don't have time for you, Impa. I'm exploring. I'm an explorer. Leave me alone. So, uh, what was your general strategy when you were able to kind of go wherever you wanted, do anything you wanted, see the world? Um, well, first of all, I during one of the cutscenes, they were like, here's these four shrines. And I was like, drop pins okay. <laughs> in general areas. Yeah. All right. So I dropped four pins, and I was like, well, I'll go to the first one. So I went running around the first one, then I found some horses, and I was like, oh, man, I forgot there's horses in these games. So I was exci- I, I uh, first thing did, you know, mm-hmm. capture a horse, and then yeah. you realize, you're like, oh, I got to register. Why don't I have a saddle? And I have to go through the whole registration process, and then I just ran a few little short stuff around there. But you just get distracted. As soon as you see a shrine, you just run and do a shrine, and see something else you run and do another shrine and um yeah it just it's it's fun to run around and just play in the sandbox and i think this is a good because you're right nick like me and you don't really have that minecraft fortnite experience well, we just thought like, it was reps right we never did that we don't have we weren't uh free time uh-huh. millionaires like kids are and it could just be like oh yeah i built a replica of the uh you know Lord of the Rings. I built literally uh, Lord of the Rings world in Minecraft this week. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, I never did that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And I think, and for us, it's like, well, just usually we stick to story games mm-hmm. or even in RPGs, it's like here's grinding that you have to do. Um, so it was kind of, this is kind of a fun game to just run around and just play with and just mess around with. Like a lot of time, if I run across like a bunch of enemies, I'll just be like, is there any heavy items I can just drop? on them because i don't feel like mm. getting into a battle right now so it's like spend cool. 10 minutes just trying to drop rocks on people and i'm like oh yeah so uh one of the first things i did was i think i stayed primarily in kind of the hyrule uh fields uh proper yeah. yeah in that area yeah. there's the two shrines there's the one where the castle and then there's like another one guarded by a bunch of goblins so i i i, I beat that temple 
defeated everyone there, couldn't get the tower to unlock. And I was like, what the heck is happening? And I almost was almost, almost went to the mountains. And I was like, I know there's shrines up there and like mountains. I'll go, I'll go, you know, find me some towers. Ended up doing the little story bits, getting the hang glider. And I was like, this game is impossible to play without the hang glider. The hang glider is such an essential piece of equipment in this game that not having it like hampers you. The amount of fall damage I was doing, I would get stuck in places. I'd have a hell of a time climbing down. Like I got to the ice area or something without the hang glider. Oh my God. (laughs) I, I don't know how I did it, how I suffered through it. I think I, yeah, like it was just just a nightmare or no i must have had the yeah. hang glider because i got to use a tower mm-hmm. anyways it's still it was just like a complete pain in the butt uh, it is such oh yeah an essential... until you get it it's like oh my gosh like uh, my, you feel so crippled the first two three hours playing this game i didn't have it i was just exploring i felt so weak okay. you get it uh okay it's better you can like travel a little further getting down off hills is actually quite fun so uh much much yeah. much better there uh, I also have some amiibos, so I busted out all my old amiibos. I've been getting some of the Twilight Princess and the Hero, because I have, like, the 8-bit Link amiibo. So I've, I've got, like, the original Zelda kind of, like, excuse me, princess aesthetic going on. Pretty ex- Oh, nice. Pretty stoked about that one. Uh, uh, that was kind of, like, my general idea. And then, yeah, I've just been slowly kind of picking away at temples, climbing mountains, finding exploring building up my heart building up my stamina wheel because i know i need like 10 chunks of stamina wheel for some unlockable in the game and dear god i'm going to get it uh any specific stories or like fun uh sequences that you've done that you're like oh i should i should talk about that that was really fun i liked i liked what i did there um i, I can't think of anything off the top of my head but uh, the fun story that i was going to tell earlier was when we we're talking about just like vehicles and on, okay. on like things you could build in this game is so i was in the in the underground and um just running around throwing uh should we explain what like that, that is sure all right sure. so you're uh, uh so the ca- cataclysm happens or something i believe is what they call it no it's not maybe maybe it's not a it's something what's the yeah, word they so use? after after the guy wakes up Essentially, like Hyrule Castle rises into the air all... with a bunch of floating islands, which creates yeah. an air space to explore as well as the ground. But then there's these giant chasms in the ground, and I assume yeah, I... that was bad. I assume that's actually where like the islands came from. So I just avoided them completely. Well, and to touch them, it's like you get poison yeah. damage, and then you you actually if you touch them and you actually get like toxic. You mm-hmm. just like. Eat. You can lose that heart until you get that okay. cleansed. Okay. Um, or you die. Um, so, yeah, it's like, but you can come across this guy standing in a field who's like looking down this big old hole. Um, but I was like, ah, I'll do this eventually. I kind of figured that this might be a, I don't, I'm, I just don't feel well equipped to deal with this. Um, after running around and getting a bunch of shrines and essentially just dumping everything into stamina, I'm just like, more comfortable okay. in the with the game so i was like screw it jump jump into it go all the way to the bottom and then i'm just like how the heck am i going to see anything so i thought like th- you can throw these mushrooms okay and they just kind of sprout into the ground so i was just doing that and they light up a big chunk of area so it's like it's not like you're having to use a little torch you can just toss it and all of a sudden you're like i can see everything and i was like that's so nice like it's nice that they have a whole area of the game that's dark but you don't, you're not hampered by, like, you can only use a torch. Yeah, yeah you Or can't, you can only, you like, can't fires. see anything. And... Yeah. Huh. And it's it just, like, because, like, I, I always, like, in when I, I need to know. So, I like, being able to, like, throw these, like, glow, pl- glow flowers or glow fungus, whatever the heck they are. All of a sudden, you just see everything. So, I come across, like, this, like, little, like, chasm and, like, looks like a house or something. So, I'm like, ah, what's a house doing down here? And I go check it out. And there's this... Like, I want to say a skeleton or a moblin just cruising around on, like, he built, he obviously, he, like, he's, like, a little, like, little uh, car, but it's got, like, I got an auto cannon on top, and he has, like, I'm, like, so I headshot him, um, take his car, and then I'm just cruising around, I'm, like, I love how Nintendo incorporated Grand Theft Auto nice. in, into, okay. in, in, into the Zelda games. This is the best Zelda game. I was doing some preliminary research watching some videos or some tips 
I have not been to the underground yet. I have played this game for probably 10 hours. I have only been a surface dweller. I've only done shrines up top. I have only looked at that. I did not understand that there was another level. There's still another level to this game. So we have Sky, Hyrule, and then an, an Abyss area. So I have a whole other section of map as I'm slowly just trying to get Hyrule figured out to keep, like, yeah. to explore. It, it's a fascinating, absolutely mind-blowing uh, world that they've created again we were talking about the technical limitations of this game guys this game is huge so uh, it's very ridiculous cool. and it's like seamless so like when i dropped into it i jumped and onto it like a tower or to uh -huh. a little platform and then i just saw it and i was like oh screw it and i just jumped for it and you could just drop and drop and drop and all of a sudden like there you are in the in the black abyss it's like cool to, to do that seamlessly on this handheld device is so cool it is very like, impressive like, um, none but props. It's awesome. it was one of those moments where you're like, yeah, and it, it on the underground's big too. There's lots mm -hmm. to it. It's not just like because I, I think, think it's a one to one. Uh, probably I wouldn't be surprised because like I just think the uh, the uh skies like there's only a couple things mm -hmm. floating. So it's kind of like, that's not a ton. Yeah, it works kind of a similar uh, premise to like the original Zelda game, right? Each island has one secret, right? It has one Kokorok, it has one shrine, it has just one thing to do, which is kind of satisfying. Because as soon as you're on an island, uh, and I think there's only like maybe one or two islands kind of per like uh, travel point. So each tower, so there's 12 islands or something maybe in total. So there's 12-ish secrets in the sky. Oh, yep. okay, that, that's that's doable. Uh, underground, however, uh, one of the tips I heard was all the towers are a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you kind of on the map just like zoom into a tower, look, drop down a level, place a pin, you'll have a pretty good idea of where you'll find the underground or the abyss towers, right? So to get those map oh, unlocks, cool. yeah. So you can kind of cheese a little bit knowing that those 12 points up, up on Hyrule uh, have direct correspondence so there you go so you learned about rupees you learned about how to cheese the maps to an area i've never been to look at the yeah. fun stuff i'm full of uh for myself uh anything noteworthy no i have those damn amiibos and i think i mentioned in like breath of the wild was one of my funny stories was of course i'm on top of a mountain and i'm like ah this is a great place to you know spawn all my material today oh opponent shows up and i'm like great now i have to get the stupid horse well this one i was trying to do like a get across a river to a shrine and i was on this weird platform it was like a rib cage of some old monster. And that's where Epona came to me today. And I was like, great. She got stuck in a hole. There's like an H hole. So obviously it was some type of Kokorok uh, puzzle. And she got like literally stuck in it. So, hmm. yeah, I waited a couple days. She came back. Finally, she came back. Was I anywhere near a stable when I when she spawned? No, absolutely not. Far like I was like almost as far away from a stable as possible. I had to ride across the world found this little uh, fortress. It was basically a blockade that had a bunch of moblins on the other side. Had to, like, battle through that to get the horse through. And I said, or, hey, there's some wood over there. And I just built, like, a ramp up and over the gate and over the moblins. And I just took a pona and just, <laughs> just bypassed all the goblins completely and went to my uh, horse ranch or whatever you want to call it, my little, uh, and was able to register her. So I was like, nice, hmm, good. Take that, Nintendo. I'm, I'm not doing anything. I like how every time Epona drops for you, it's just like oh, not a, a whole ordeal. It's not a convenient place. And I was like, great, awesome. I'm glad that this time is a flat circle. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are just the same game in my mind. So good job. Uh, other than that, I really enjoy uh, some of the NPCs you see in the world. I love the sign guy. One of my favorite things is when I see the sign guy who is working for this man who's like trying to rebuild uh, the president of this building company. And he's holding up the sign and you have to kind of build the other leg. So whether you take all the material and you build kind of these funky, uh, like you try and sandwich it. I try and sandwich it sometimes together because essentially what you want to do is tell him to let go. And he lets go. And then the sign stands up and he gives you some rewards and stuff like that. So I love that guy. If I see him somewhere, I got to stop everything I'm doing and help him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I usually go my, I go for a trusty T. Okay. Just grab two, two of the wood things yep. that are always nearby yep. and th toss a T on it. And oh, like, nice. I get like really intense. I build like a V to catch the oh, sign okay. and then I'll put like one on top to sandwich it so it stays and I'll put one underneath so it doesn't like wiggle. It, it's always just super complicated. Once I built him inside of my contraption and had to like lift it up and then drop it and then had to like drop perfectly so I was under there with him so I could talk to him. 
That's always the funnest. Yeah. Uh, or uh, I, I uh, did that, like, use the ability to, to go through the rock. Oh, yeah. Because I was like, there, there's a, a rock face or whatever. And all of a sudden, I realized that I was in the middle of the rock and standing next to a treasure, treasure chest. And I was like, well, this is a nice surprise. I didn't even know this was here. That's fun. It's like yeah, because there grab, are there are lots of leave. there are lots of caves in this area too, right? I found a big rock golem that I fought that got me a piece of armor. I met some lady who told me about these three magical pieces of armor. One helps you climb in the rain. Oh, we want to talk about things that suck. Fuck the rain in this game, because there's times mm. where you're climbing a mountain and all of a sudden it starts raining and you just have to stand there and you can't do anything. Oh, and you just wait. Wait, you have to wait. You, you, there's no time skips unless you like crack open a fire or something like that uh oh i know you just literally have to put down your controller and just wait there are potions and equipment that can help you climb surfaces i think they're called like frog armor okay. uh, so i found this lady that told me one about it was like a frog armor there's one that like helps uh prevent electricity damage which would be helpful especially in thunderstorms uh, and i forget what the other one was it was like a barbarian outfit like helped improve your attack so i fought this rock golem in a cave and was able to get uh, increased attack with my shirt that I was wearing. So I was like, cool, awesome. Uh, those are just like some of the things I've uncovered thus far. That guy, uh, what was other? Oh. So any memorable uh, enemies? Uh, not, I, I honestly haven't seen anything outside of uh, the big guys with the ploppy ears or the floppy noses, the moblins, the bacoblins, and that's it. The black bacoblins, like still. Have you came across any horror horrorblins or what the heck they're called? Horrorblins. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They act, like legitimately. I was just smashing my way through through a cave as one does. Oh yeah, the weird monkey guys. Yeah, and they got like a Ganon nose and hair thing going uh-huh. on, and I was like, "Oh, what the heck are these things?" What was, I just what was what's Ganon been doing prepared. in the caves all these years? Hmm. It's uh, you know what they definitely share some traits, man. Yeah. I was like, "There's," but it's uh yeah, kind of. It was one of those things where it's like, I I love that Nintendo is kind of expanding on the Moblin mm-hmm. idea. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like we've only ever sometimes just get Moblins, Moblins, Moblins. It's all they are. It's like um. It's nice to see like a nice variety and like they're actually kind of like they mix it up. Mm. I think that, uh, yeah, it's cool. Okay. I, I, I like the world that they're building and I like the, all the different mm-hmm. um, gear that you can get because like I love collecting all the gear, especially if it gives me different stuff. I have a diving suit so I can uh, okay. dive farther. Cool. Um, but without the glide mechanic, it's pretty useless. Oh, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. That's fair. Yeah, I, I like the. the that's one of my favorite things. As soon as I find a town, I go check out what kind of sh- shirts they have. Everything's super overpriced. And I'm like, oh, obviously, I need to do lots of mining to have coin or something, right? Like, there's a whole other uh, level of currency that they're expecting in this game. I think there's lots of underground areas, uh, lots of caves to explore, treasures to or obtain. Or you just, you, you just end up selling all your, like, yeah. here's all my all my knickknacks and baubles. Yeah, here's every Do I have Hyrule, enough cash? Every Hyrule herb I've ever collected. Here you go. What's that worth? 50 bucks? Perfect. Good. I'm 10% to that shirt that I want. Cool. Is there any, like, um, skeleton-like stuff that mm-hmm. I can sell? It's like, cool, here's this. Take my junk. Yeah, and I, I did find the fairy fountain, or a fairy fountain that will help uh, build up your armor, right? So you can do upgrades to your armor if you have the right equipment. I don't know how to unlock it yet, so I'm kind of there. Do you need some kind of musical instrument. Yeah, and I found a bunch of guys down at a ranch just down the hill and they got in a cart, but I couldn't get the cart up the hill and I was like, I'm going to go do something else. So where I'm at right now, uh, where I'm in this podcast and just kind of introduction to the game is I'm just exploring Hyrule. I'm going to unlock all the temples. I'm going to go underground, unlock a bunch of temples. I'm going to get the Master Sword. I'm going to have a bunch of heart pieces. I'm going to do a bunch of shrines and then I'm going to start tackling the temples. And I think there's four or five temples in this game. So I think by the time we ne- play next, in theory, let's try and have one or two temples done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's fair. Okay. And I, I kind of got the same thing. I'm just I'm just naturally doing that, just running around, yeah. see if I see a shrine uh, or I see I, a tower. I find I'm more comfortable it. playing the game when I do that. I have a copy of Breath of the Wild that I bought. F- I, have, I have one for wii u that i beat 100 percent or like whatever i i got through uh and then my copy of the switch that i bought later it has the master sword and it has a whole map unlocked and that's it i did nothing else 
and it's a blank slate. So if I ever want to go to back to Breath of the Wild, I can pick it up, have the Master Sword, have the whole map unlocked, and just play the game and have fun with it. Uh, so I kind of feel like I need to get to that point in this game before I can like have fun with it because I'm a crazy person. That's fair, and I'm just enjoying exploring the world because I find that that's where a lot of the enjoyment is. Like the story mm-hmm. and the plot from Breath of the Wild was kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever, it's there. I'll go tell the the story points and get all mm-hmm. the cutscenes, but it's more just like enjoying the gameplay and exploring the yeah. world. And and you know what, I'm that's it, this that's just relaxing. It's nice to kind of go at your own pace, I, figure yeah. things out at your own the- time. I'm trying to avoid any spoilers. I've wa- I, I think I have one spoiler on like okay. told so Ugh. but I, I i like it so yeah i think I'm, I, look, I'm looking forward to so our kind of plan now is we're done here we'll come back uh in a part three uh we'll talk kind of more temples we'll do another temple and then we might do like maybe a fifth show kind of by the end of the year uh try and get that in just to kind of finish up our chronicles series here and go from there so uh, with that uh, hopefully you guys are also enjoying yourselves. Hopefully you're further than we are. Uh, you have a lot more. Maybe you're free time millionaires yourself, and you can play lots of game, and you don't have other things to do. Uh, oh, current thoughts. Cool. Do you think I have any inspiring notes before I leave? Uh, I should have known that Three Temples was just a fake out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, it feels like Breath of the Wild too. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh. If you don't know this, here you go. Here's my third tip for the day. Uh, you can use the recall ability to create elevators. So what I do is I take my uh, ultra hand ability and I'll take a platform, like just a piece of wood, and you just kind of like raise it up and down and do that a couple times, especially like uh, if there's like a big base and you, you know, you can't get around to different levels. You can then press recall on it and then it just literally recalls to the, all the positions you put it at. So it acts as an elevator. So if you ever need to get up to a really high spot, you can cheese a bunch of it by just literally building a elevator out of a piece of wood. Yeah, um, I haven't. I've never done that one. That's a fun tip. Um, but I've done the you don't do it, like use a recall on something after like um, dropping it or something. Okay. You're yeah. Just yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, because recall works um, from very far away. So uh, use recall if you haven't. Uh, it's a very strong ability. And uh, cool. Uh, any closing thoughts from yourself? Um, no, I just hope that everybody's having fun with it and, um, yeah, do you just enjoy your own kind of journey try not to get, don't get overwhelmed because I find with open world games, there's this tendency to get overwhelmed and then you just never play it again. Mm-hmm. And that, I struggled with that for a long time. Um, and it was just kind of like, I don't know what it was, probably playing games for this, but <coughs> just... Do do whatever you feel like. Mm-hmm. Don't don't feel like you have to get do things in a certain order or whatever. Just run around, have fun, explore stuff. If you can't figure it out, you can come back to it later. Yeah. Don't don't rack your head on a single shrine for fifteen like hours because you're stuck. It's like go do something else. Go do anything else. You can always just teleport back to it. Sweet. Cool. So. There you go. So there, there's our tips, tricks, and advice for this fun game. I'll be back probably sometime maybe in July. So be a little month and a bit and yeah, talk then. Yep. Have fun, everybody.